Eddie Kingston has a verbal debate with Chris Jericho. Boy, did he ever. He really did. So, <laughs> this is long. I don't know if I had need to really go into this note by note. But the key is, even though, because they were in Connecticut, and they made reference to this, and they were just, just down the block from the sports entertainment company, and this is supposed to be a wrestling show. But the key is, Chris Jericho here was a sports entertainer. And I've heard people say, man, this is... It was not a good promo. It was, uh, it was uh, too, uh, what's the word? Un, uh, un, oh, because he mentioned a baby face? Inauthentic. It sounded too rehearsed and it wasn't natural. Like, that's what he's trying to do. He is here. This feud is in part about pro wrestling versus sports entertainment. You're not supposed to cheer the sports entertainer. Chris Jericho is supposed to be the sports entertainer. So he, he cut a very WWE promo, a very good version of a WWE promo. He even said, this is going to be sports entertainment, but it's going to be entertaining, which it was. And he proceeded to follow suit. So he had a, a bunch of catchphrases, a bunch of buzzwords thrown in there, a story to tell, a, stri- a, a script to stick to, no matter how much. Eddie tried to throw him off so he explains when they brought in Eddie Kingston Jericho had never heard of him everyone else was so excited he thought maybe they were bringing in Eddie Edwards and then he saw Eddie Kingston looked like a jobber didn't know why he was they were bringing him in he saw him wrestle and then he saw him wrestle he saw his promo <laughs> I just remembered when he says I saw you wrestle what's his name and moved on I just remembered it was Cody <laughs> that's funny I didn't I literally didn't realize that until right now that's awesome. But he saw him wrestle, saw him cut his promo. Well, that's another that's another sports entertainment deal because yes. in, in AEW, Cody leaves, and the very next show, they're noting, you know, we've only had one other, um, what match dog, was it? But anyway, it was Cody, dog, collar. dog collar match. Yeah, there's only been one other dog collar match. It involves Cody Rhodes. They just mention his name like nothing. Yes. Whereas in WWE, you leave – and they never mention you. And when you yes. do, it's like a giant news story. Oh, my God, Seth Rollins mentioned Dean Ambrose. I can't even believe it. Yeah, he was his WWE name. Yes, yes. Yes. But, yeah, that's what happened here. Uh, and he says, I knew you'd be a great baby face. And he starts laughing. What is a baby face, he says. So Jericho continues Eddie's story. You finally made it the big time at the age of 38 years old. Meanwhile, you're jealous of me because I had the big time at the age 22. By the time I was your age, I had already toured the world, made event of pay-per-views, won world titles, made millions of dollars. Deep down, you don't think you could achieve what I've achieved. Eddie says, look, I'm not like you. I'm not going to cut some guy's legs off to get myself over just because a promoter told me to. And there's a lot of young guys backstage falling for your shit. I'm not going to fall for it. I don't want to talk anymore. I just want to fight you at the pay-per-view. So Jericho brings up Eddie's, uh, the thing he wrote for, I think it was The Athletic, who was talking about his family. Your first hero was your uncle. He was a failure. Your father was a failure. And deep down inside, you think you're a failure, too. And Eddie is gritting his teeth. Fists are clenched. He's, he, he can barely contain himself. Jericho, I should mention, had security out there. And they were sure to point out Eddie didn't want security. He didn't want to talk. He just wanted to fight. Jericho wanted the security out here so they could do a sports entertainment segment. So Jericho goes on and says, you can't win the big one. In this company, I'm the big one. Not Brian Danielson, not John Moxley, not CM Punk, not the world champion Hangman Page. Chris Jericho is the big one in AEW. I'll fight you at the pay-per-view. And if you win, I will shake your hand and say I respect you because I helped you get over the one thing that's holding you back. And Eddie says, fine, I accept. But listen, I don't want the, the, the mimosa match, Chris Jericho. I don't want the Chris Jericho was thrown off the cage. Give me the Jericho that won the first world title here, who bled buckets in Tennessee, who got respect from Tenru. We had a Tenru reference here in AEW, who turned WCW upside down. And give war. Th- and well, I didn't mention war, but it's true. Yes. <laughs> but give me the D- Chris Jericho that your close friend Levesque hated, because if you don't, I'm going to eat you alive. And Jericho's last line is just, you will always be a loser. You can't win the big one ever. Hit my music. This was also great. This, the, this was awesome. For and the rest uh, of the show, the best promos by far were on this, this program. And it's a, it's a fascinating little, uh, little storyline here that they've got going on to the, to the point where, you know, like I mentioned Observer Live today, I, I don't want Eddie Kingston to win at the pay-per-view. I want this to be at least a two-match series, preferably three, 
where, uh, you know, Jericho beats him the first time. And the, you know, the ammunition that Jericho would have in his promos, if in fact Eddie couldn't win the big one, and Eddie has to face the fact that, my God, I am a failure. And building to that second match, they could do a, another straight match. They could do a stipulation. They could build to a third match at the pay-per-view. Obviously, in the end, Eddie Kingston beats Chris Jericho. I mean, that's clearly how this is being designed. But uh, I I think that this has legs. Legs to go more than just one match. Go to the pay-per-view. Eddie beats him and we move on. I think you got something here. And I, I absolutely would not rush this feud. This feud's conclusion. And now we reach the point in the show where it began to piss me off for almost until the very end. The Hardy family office is doing another promo in the stairwell. Matt Hardy promises Andrade will win the TNT title on Rampage. Some reference to Private Party pinning someone on Dark, even though Matt hates them now because they lose all the time. They lost in the Battle Royal. Oh, that's... Well, I'll get to that in a minute. So he challenges Sting and Darby Allin and Sammy Guevara to face himself and Andrade and uh, Isaiah Cassidy in a Tornado Trios match revolution. Okay, great. That's all fine and dandy. I don't know. They could have just booked that match. I really didn't need this promo to introduce it. But it does remind me, one other thing I want to mention in, in the Battle Royal that was good in that first half. So Private Party keeps on losing, and Matt Hardy keeps getting more and more pissed at them. So Mark Quinn was thrown out of the Battle Royal very quickly. So he's out. He's on the floor. Uh, Isaiah Cassidy is fighting in the apron. He gets knocked off, but Matt is there to catch him in his arms. He pushes him back up at the apron and pushes him up there. But then Quinn approaches him to high five to get in the way. So then when uh, Cassie's knocked off the apron a second time, now Matt can't save him. Now they're out of the match. And Matt was sickened and disgusted. and He walked out. That was another highlight for the first part of that battle royal. I want to mention that EBV here says, I like your idea, Brian, but I think that Eddie needs the win now. He's been beaten enough in really big matches. My friend, that makes his story better. That's part of the story, that he keeps losing the big matches. And he loses the big match to Jericho, and that furthers this storyline. And then, like I said, your second match, that's the match where Eddie has him beaten. We all know that he has beaten Chris Jericho, but Jericho fucks him, and he gets the W. That leads to the third match where he gets his big win over Chris Jericho, preferably in a big match on the uh, the May pay-per-view would be a great time to do it, double or nothing. Actually, yes. I mean, that's that's the way that I would put this thing together. And I don't know what they're going to do, but like, if you've watched Jericho from day one in this company, he doesn't do one-month feuds. I mean, yes. these, are, these are long... Uh, intricate storyline. So I don't know if we're getting three matches. I don't even know if we're getting two matches. And obviously, Tony Khan's, you know, it's his decision. But I think this has legs to go through at least the end of May. The dramatic reading of the Hulk Hogan Brutus Beefcake promo. Please welcome the Mega Maniacs, Brutus the Barber Beefcake, and Hulk Hogan. Well, you know something, Mean Gene? Now more than ever, with just one week away, I'm aware of how destiny is going to take its course, brother. Because just a few short weeks ago, bro, when I was laying in the weeds at Venice Beach, California, and I had Monday Night Raw tuned in, I saw Money Incorporated run across the ring with a metal attache case with the speed of a lightning bolt. And as it crashed into Brutus, the bionic barber beefcake, Blood Brothers face, I saw what I didn't want to see. I heard what I didn't want to hear. The emotions ran from head to toe. I chilled. I goosebumped. And I broke a sweat as I stood up, man. And I rushed from head to toe. I spent two days running up and down the aisles of Kmart, picking up that tonic getting all that hair color together, and getting ready to do a number on Money Incorporated. I was sniffing for the hair tonic. I was sniffing for the butch wax. And lo and behold, as I kicked down the door of the Ramada Indoor at 48th and 8th Avenue, just a bit north of the Mid-City Gym, 
I found the brother, Brutus the barber beefcake, with his feet propped up on an ottoman, laid back in a lazy boy, watching Mo, Larry, and Curly with an ice pack on his nose. Thank God for the man upstairs, that Brutus the barber is okay. So I took to the desert outside Las Vegas, chopping down some big nasty-looking cactuses, trying to dull up the titanium steel blades, chopped down a couple of small mountains, and then it came to me, brother. I knew that I'd just throw the scissors away because I'm just going to yank the hair right out of their heads. So Las Vegas, Nevada, and the whole wide world, what are you going to do when the mega maniacs run wild on you? The Hulkster, Hulk Hogan, and Brutus the Barber Beefcake, and Mouth of the South Jimmy Hart, the Mega Maniacs, perhaps the next tag team champions of the World Wrestling Federation. The Hulkster has never looked better live and in mint condition. If you enjoy these videos, for just $7.99 per month, you can enjoy full-length editions of The Brian and Vinny Show, Wrestling Observer Live, Figure Four Daily with Tom Lawler and Lance Storm, the Mad Men Podcast, Speak Now Pro Wrestling with Denise Salcedo and more, plus hundreds of archived shows, all in beautiful HD. Don't miss out. Join us today.